He is another man whose proximity to Boris Johnson has cast a long and permanent shadow over his life. The mention there of, of public service is fair. You know, if you make a ton of money, it's a little bit medieval for my money. I've I, I got to be honest with you. I'm, I'm kind of with um, an Irene Bevin on this one. Just pay more tax. But a lot of people who've got who are ended up richer than Croesus do decide to sort of salve their consciences or their innate sense of the utter inequality that's delivered the kind of wealth they enjoy by going to work for charities or by doing by doing good works. It's it's a bit why Victorian entrepreneurs opened children's homes, it's uh, at, at workhouses and and built you know sanitariums for their crippled workforce. So I, I get that, but my goodness me. Today's conversation could be about so many different things. Are you bored of Boris Johnson? This is his, still his legacy. Everything he touched turned to... I can't say that word on the radio, but whatever the opposite of the Midas touches, every single thing he touches, including, of course, our country, but many people are still not ready to recognise that. And crucially, this attempt, this power grab, this absolutely blatant and transparent attempt to sell Channel 4 to populate the BBC with their own people, <laughs> to put their own people in charge of commercial broadcasting organisations, everything from, from little old me right through to the Capital Breakfast Show, uh, and, and also, of course, to put their own people in charge of the BBC. And when the first one failed, up popped this fellow who'd already um, seen his attempts to get onto the board come to absolutely nothing during what you have to presume is a more independent appointment process. It's one of those moments, isn't it? One of those moments where you really notice where we are. You've got a deputy chairman of the Conservative Party, a man who, frankly, to call him as thick as mince would be a grave disservice to the versatility and deliciousness of mince. He will accuse nurses of not of lying, really, about the necessity of using food banks because they're really just victims of their own poor financial management, while bending the knee and licking whipped cream out of the navel of a man who needed an £800,000 loan arrangement simply to keep his various ships afloat while enjoying a prime ministerial salary in excess of £140,000. That's Brexit Britain. That's Boris Johnson. I'm going to open up the phone lines. Um, 0345 6060973 is the number you need. It's a weird one, this. It's a huge story. It's a very big deal. It is, however, not an obvious phone-in subject. So I'm going to do something I don't do very often, and I'm just going to ask you to do what I've just done and tell me what this tells you about who we are and where we are, and possibly even where we're going. 0345 6060 973. I could go with the faecal touch, but it's not a phrase that I'm going to deploy frequently in the course of this morning's programme. I, I, as ever, at the moment, in this weird little interregnum, I... Would love to hear from people who, who were or even perhaps still are Boris Johnson fans. There'll be plenty of it in tomorrow's newspapers, but you, you can't hire someone. You can't put someone <laughs> in a massive job who's just helped you secure an £800,000 loan that nobody knows about. I, it's so bloody obvious. I can't believe it needs to be said out loud. I, I feel a little bit sorry for Richard Sharp. I don't think he was necessarily dodgy. Whether or not he would have got the job in the absence of already being a crony of Boris Johnson and indeed a loan facilitator of Boris Johnson, I do not know. But my goodness me, the way that man thought he could do whatever the heck he wanted in direct contravention of tradition, regulation, expectation and basic common decency doesn't just harm us, it harms the people closest to him. It harms the people that he offers patronage to. It damages reputations, it undermines good works, histories, CVs. And now he's gone. Another one. Another Boris Johnson appointment. Departing from the public stage in disgrace. Let's talk about whether it's time for that role. It's a really important role, given the size and scope and influence of the BBC. It's a really important role that the man or woman who chairs the board. So this isn't people making editorial decisions about what's in the news and what's not in the news and how that's tackled. This is about the probity of the BBC. So it's absolutely vital that that person can prove their own probity, isn't it? Their own um, uh, decent approach uh, to standards and, and, and capacity to follow the rules, uh, which Richard Sharp, by his own admission, has tripped up on. Um, is it time to remove that appointment from any political influence at all and have an independent panel of people appointing the BBC chair? 
But let's not take our focus off Rishi Sunak because he was alongside Boris Johnson throughout all of this and is now the Prime Minister. He was the man who, we learnt nothing new really from this report today that we haven't known for months about Richard Sharp and that loan. Um, should Rishi Sunak have intervened earlier and just told him to go, made him go or sacked him? Um, is that what the Prime Minister should have done? And too often is Rishi Sunak found wanting. Should the government appoint the BBC chair, plain and simple? Should they or shouldn't they? And should Rishi Sunak have sacked Richard Sharp when it emerged that he was the key contact in the facilitation of a loan uh, for the then Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, uh, who at the time was poised to appoint the next BBC chair. This is where this is where the dots join and start to become very suspect indeed. So should the government appoint the BBC chair, such an important organisation in our national life, and should Rishi Sunak have sacked Richard Sharp when it emerged that he was the key contact in that loan for the Prime Minister, who then went on to appoint him. 0345 6060 973, the number to call. You can text 84850, you can tweet at LBC. And again, think about the standards that you're expected to uphold in your workplace. Would it have taken upwards of two, three months for this to be cleared up? I doubt it.